All right, so we're back in the studio kicking off our podcast yet again, trying to make this a regular thing. This time we're back in the studio with Chris Ray, all the way from LA. And Chris is one of the uh, sort of most influential people that we've followed for like two years, still haven't met, but still take so much inspiration from his work and his team's work. Um, so yeah, Chris, thank you so much for making the time, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me. Why don't you just, just give people some background of yourself and sort of what, what you do at the moment and I guess maybe where it started from as well. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. I'm based in Los Angeles area. Uh, I started out filming skateboarding. That's where most people have, have seen my work. And then obviously over the, you know, the years that branched off into everything, whether that's, you know, music videos, car commercials, uh, short films, product videos. I mean, really anything that involves holding a camera, um, I'm open to doing. So uh, I spent the last 10 years with uh, DC Shoes uh, running their films department. And I recently left and we started Motion Clubhouse full time. So that's that's where I'm at now. That's rad. And what were your hobbies? Like, so obviously you were a skater before picking up a camera. Was there anything else that sort of made up Took, took up your time, made you as a person before then? No, you know what? I'm the kind of person that when when I'm into something, I'm absolutely obsessed yeah. with it, and that's all I focus on. So I would say for me, uh, growing up skateboarding and the day that my friends came to me in like seventh grade and said, hey, we're going to make our own skate video. Do you want to be in it? My mind was blown. I was like, we can make our own video. We could be the stars. And from there, it was just, I was like, I'm going to make this video happen. So I kind of became the filmer in our crew and I was obsessed with holding the camera. And, and I think the best part about it was I never knew you can make a living off of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe I would have made a, a living sooner, but I was glad that I did it for the love of it and not for the money. I didn't chase it for the money. I, it was such a dream come true. I'm like, there's no way somebody's going to pay you to do this. Like, there's absolutely no way. So when I found out, when somebody said, hey, we're going to pay you to do this, my mind was just blown. So what were you shooting on back then? Was it like the mini VHS DV tapes or whatever they were? Yeah, I started I started on like, you know, my parents, eight millimeter camera. And then Rad. the dream camera was like the VX 1000. That was that's like the most iconic camera in skateboarding. And yeah. that took me that took mini DV tapes. And then I'd say from there, you know, it was obviously just using that camera for years. That's still the most influential camera, you know, in skateboarding. Yeah. Uh, but then I went on to HD and, you know, yeah. using Reds, GoPros, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. And what were you doing for work at, back then when you first started? For being like full time filming? Yeah. Yeah. So I was working um, in, in just like warehouses, it's kind of like helping like shipping and receiving and things like that. Um, you know, I just, I, I liked the whole kind of like hard work kind of vibe. Like, doing construction i worked on like a llama ranch at one point i worked uh work, like loading bales of hay and you know i even had one point where i was like i've always wanted to work at ups i think that would be cool and i went and got a job at ups just so i could say i did it you know and did that yep. for three months just to experience it but you know i didn't really i didn't really understand like what you could do in life or that you had that people had the opportunity to do whatever they wanted yeah. i think i came from a family that always just had like basic jobs you know like mm -hmm. there was ne nobody in my family really had this like oh my gosh you do that for a living like that's crazy so yeah i wasn't surrounded by i guess seeing the real life opportunities and and you have to also remember like there was no social media for us growing up so you didn't see no. what was possible where nowadays you can open up your phone and you're like yeah. oh I can do that for a living or yeah, like, holy shit, that motherfucker does that for a living. Like he gets to yeah. do that or she gets to do this. Like, yeah. yeah, it's, it's wild. And it's, um, as a, it's frustrating and inspiring at the same time. So what was one thing you learned? So in the warehouse or one of your earlier jobs, what was one thing you sort of still take with you that you learned from, from those early jobs? Definitely work ethic. Um, definitely time, you know, like my whole, my, my saying is early is on time, on time is late. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely like think time is important. I think work ethic is important in action sports, you know, transferring over to that. It's a lot more lenient, a lot more laid back. Um, you work around the athletes and things like that, but I definitely appreciate what I learned and the fact that I did have a real job. I mean, there's people now that are able to go kind of straight into their dream and that's the only thing they experience, yeah. but I was glad that I got to do those like long hours and warehouses and, you know, working on the ranch, doing construction, things like that. So yeah. it really helped me, I think, grow quicker and understand that, you know, to be thankful for what I'm able to do now. Yeah, absolutely. I was 
what was I doing? I was working at like a juice bar. I was doing the polar opposite. I was making juices and smoothies in Australia for like six years. That's a good um, one. I wish I wish I had pr- that skill. Pretty much making those in my house all the time. Yeah, dude. I, I cut all the fruit in our house. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, for for me, like that definitely taught me customer relations. Like first and foremost, like you're in Australia, you're pretty much forced to to smile and be pleasant to everyone, give everyone the the, the best experience possible in like a well, five. Minute. I've been I've been to Australia, and I don't think I've ever met a bad Australian or a, a not nice person. There. I know it's, we're, it's incredible. we're not bad for a bunch of convicts, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you've been there? Oh yeah, yeah, many times. We always do uh, skate tours out there. So I love it. That's sick. Yeah, my, my favorite country for sure. What's your favorite city there that you've experienced? Um, I would say Sydney is probably my favorite. Um, dude, it, it's just like it's all awesome. Yeah, you know, it's cool how it's different. Um, the Gold Coast is obviously that's where I'm from. Um, that's yeah. where you're from. Yeah, yeah, I spent some time out there. That's probably my favorite no area way. for sure. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah, I was born in Adelaide and then spent pretty much my entire life on the Gold Coast. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, beach town. It, it did not suit me yep. whatsoever. But <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Ed. And so how long were you at DC? And was there a, a pivotal moment that sort of, that like, okay, this is the chance, like this is the moment I need to pivot into my own work, my own thing? Um, or was it a gradual sort of flow into it? <laughs> I think it was a little bit of both. Um, you know, I spent, they were really supportive of, of me growing and taking other opportunities. So even being full time with them, I was with them for 10 years and I had bosses that would be like, Hey, like you're putting in so much work, go take those side jobs, take those side gigs. And I would learn from those and bring them back from DC. So I think it was a benefit for the company and myself. Um, it was kind of like getting a free class, right. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and schooling. But I think it was, it was a gradual thing, but you know, if you asked me a year ago, "Hey, are you going to go off and do your own thing?" I would have, I would have said no. Yep. You know, what I mean, I was happy, everything was great, um, no complaints. The, you know, I was making good money, and I was able to take jobs on the side whenever I wanted. And I think it finally all just kind of like hit at once, to where it was like, okay, I'm getting hit up three to four times a week by people to to shoot for them, and I'm not reaching out to anybody. Yep. You know what I mean? And it just got to the point where it was like, this is crazy. Because obviously in the freelance world, right? We're like, when you're when you're an employee, you make the less, least amount, yeah. right? When you're on a retainer with a company, then you're like, you're a little bit more. And then when you're independent contractor, that's when you make the most. Yeah. That's how it kind of works in our world. And it got to the point where it was like, okay, I can, I'm getting paid good over here, but now I'm making just as much money in one week. Yeah if I go out on my own. Um, and I remember my wife came to me and she goes, Hey, I think it's time. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, you're getting hit up a lot and things are going really well. And you've been doing this for years. And like, Mm -hmm. I think it's time to take next step. And she she knew where your heart was too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think she, it it was hard for me because I wasn't mad at DC and I wasn't bummed and I wasn't, they weren't going out of business or anything. So I was just like, wait, like, I got to do this, you know, yeah. but it, it did all make sense. Um, you know, and I'm all about growth. I want to do things new and I want the new challenge. And I think, I think she saw me getting a little comfortable and it was just kind of security yeah. is a, is a, it's, it's a great thing for a lot of people, but I also think it's a dangerous thing. You know, yeah. I think you get stuck sometimes being there and just being like, well, this is it it's secure and, and all that stuff. But I mean, i we left June first, and you know it's only been like what three, three, four months, and yeah. I can't even imagine going back to what I yeah. was doing. I get like I guess that makes it harder when you actually enjoy the people you work for. You enjoy yeah. being around the people that you work with. Um, you know, some people have spoken to me. It's like it's they're sort of glad they had this negative mm-hmm. moment, like because it. The, the company made it, the employee made it easy for them to leave. Um, exactly. But I guess that does make it harder and, it, and you get complacent, you get comfortable with um, with where you're at when you enjoy where you work. Yeah, it was. I had a lot of support from them still, even when I went to them and told them what my plan was. And we actually, so Motion Clubhouse still uh, handles um, a lot of DC's video content. So you so, took the best of both worlds from it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we had a great opportunity where I went to them and I said, Hey, look, I'm going to give you guys six months notice. I'm either, I'm either, I can walk away tomorrow. I can walk away in six months 
or you guys can sign our agency and we'll continue to work with, work with you. And one of my one of my really good friends, Martin, he's a partner in the business. So he's he left with me. He was at DC also. So we wow. both went and started this thing together and we're still working with DC, which is awesome. That's epic. And what, what's one of the biggest, I guess, growing pains or transition pains coming out of that full-time job into literally everything falling onto your own shoulders? I would say, like, the security thing was, was a big deal. And I think that that's something that maybe held me for a long time. Like, before we left, I would say it was probably, maybe it's been like three years ago, I was diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis. And that's that's kind of a big deal because it's one of those things where you I might wake up one day and I just feel horrible or can't really move and things like that and insurance is obviously like super important to have when you have any kind of medical issue so i think a big fear of mine was like how are we going to be able to survive and ha- be able to afford insurance and things like that um and the other thing too is like if i if i had like an ms flare-up or episode right for a week or two DC is still going to pay me if I'm an employee, right? Like they're, yeah. they're going to still cover me. If I'm freelance, all these people aren't going to say, Hey, we understand you can't make the shoot. Here's no. your check anyways, because we like you. It doesn't work like that. So it's a bigger risk, but, um, it's all worked out. And then I think it also was a huge positive for me because it made me really focus on my health more and, and kind of like what I eat and exercise and take right. care of myself. So it was kind of like a thing that, that forced me to, to get even better. Did you work at all by yourself as a freelancer? Um, yeah, it would be. So basically what Martin and I were doing is we were always at DC and then like freelance would come along and it might be like where he goes off and does a job and I kind of cover him at DC or I go do a job and he covers me at DC. And we, we always had each other's back and worked with each other on that. And then obviously like people saw us as a team because we work so well together. So it got to the point to where there's like, we're going to hire Chris Martin. We're going to hire Chris Martin. We're going to mm-hmm. hire Chris Martin. And that that helped a ton. But yeah, he was, I mean... The second I called him and told him, I was like, hey, man, I'm I'm doing this. You don't have to do this because yeah. of me. This is totally up to you. And I, I respect whatever decision you want. And he's like, no, I'm on board. And I was like, all right, well, then let's go. Let's let's hit the ground running. That's so good. You got to do it with your best friend. Yeah, absolutely. That's epic. And so what does a day in the life kind of look like for both of you? So we have we have a few clients that we that we work with. It was funny right when we first transitioned, it almost felt like a uh, for me because I was working every day around the clock. It felt like this like weird retirement thing where I was like, wow, this is crazy. Like I'm working a little bit here and there, but I'm making more money and and I have way more free time. And then as soon as we got a few clients, it just is snowballed to where we're just working around the clock now all the time again. But um, but definitely. we have bigger bigger rewards, you know. Yeah, definitely. And uh, what, what excites you the most about work now? So coming out again, coming out of 10 years working at DC, full-time job, um, what sort of gets you out of bed differently? What's, what's changed? I think it's the whole, the pressure of not having all the answers right now, right? Like at DC, I kind of figured out, like I was able to kind of go in there and be like, this is what we're doing. This is the plan it's going to get taken care of. And you know what, if something fails or if it doesn't work, it's not on me. It's, it's on the company. Yeah. They're, they're a huge company. They can cover it. But now it's like, it really is on us, you know? And, and I told Martin when we went to go do this, I said, look, I don't have all the answers and, and we're not going to have the answers. Sometimes we're going to run into situations and we're going to have failures or we're going to have, you know, problems here and there. And we're going to have to figure them out. And that, that's mm-hmm. been the most exciting part is it just looking back and already at the three or four months we've been doing this full time and going, look at how much we've already learned. Look how far we've already come and like run, just running into these situations and being like, Ooh, this isn't good, but I'm really excited that this happened yeah. so early on in our business. And we, yeah. we've kind of know what to do. Those pivoting moments are, yeah, really, if you can be self-aware that you're like, that was a fuck up or like, I could have mm-hmm. done this better. And you do have that moment. It's funny. You mentioned that like of feeling early in the process uh, mm-hmm. as well. Like, cool. It's kind of humbling. Like, I'm glad I had this now and you can pivot in the future. You can, you take that with you. For someone else that was in, in your position of, of being comfortable in the full-time job they've got and struggling to leave to pursue their own career, what one piece of advice would you give to someone in that position? I mean, I would think, I would think building up your side hustle is good. You know what I mean? Getting getting a few of those clients, getting the, the getting your work out there, um, and just working, connecting with a lot of people. You know, don't look at people as competition. Like, collaborate with a lot of great filmmakers. Um, don't think it's just all on you. I think building a team around you is good. 
even if it's a team that you just are reaching out to when it's like a per job thing, you know, you yeah. don't need to have like we don't plan on having like a ton of full time employees. It's like we're reaching out to people when the jobs come in or mm-hmm. or we have employees that are going to be on retainer f- with our retainers, you know. So yeah. um, I think it's just kind of like, yeah, creating that side hustle and that demand. I mean, we when we got to the point to where people were calling us three or four times a week, it it made the decision very obvious at that point yeah. to where I was like, hey, this is happening. Imagine if we actually called people and said, we're trying to work for you. So we were very fortunate. And uh, I think that that's, that's the best thing somebody to do is just go out there and kind of create that network and that demand and get your name out there. Yeah, definitely sharpening your skills. Like, I guess if you're spending 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. at for the rest of the day doing mm-hmm. what you want to do and sharpening your skills networking i guess the, yeah you hope that those pieces start to just fall into place and occupy even more of your time yeah and i think too the thing that's been important is like for us we we don't just do one thing right where i'll meet a lot of people and they're like oh i'm just a director or i'm just yeah. a producer or i'm just a camera operator and it's like dude i'll have i'll have people call me back hey can you do, can we hire you to do this bts project and i'm like absolutely yeah. like i'll do yeah. whatever i don't care and i'll produce i'll direct i'll i'll edit um it's just really being like a multi-tool i think it's super super important and valuable to to companies and other people out there yeah and i'm still honestly learning about the whole hollywood side of it of mm-hmm. of learning what what a gaffer the difference between a gaffer producer director ac does like it's that Mm -hmm. was so foreign to me and i guess like especially coming from australia it might be different growing up in la you may be more um surrounded by it but coming from australia not having any idea of just knowing that you just want to pick up a camera Mm -hmm. edit what you shot and then put it out there and then you're just sort of learning the rest as you go along no it's it's funny because even though i'm in the la area that's been a hard adjustment for me because i've been really lucky to have a team of guys that are you know we'll do it all you know, like yeah. we, we do everything. So even when we're on shoots, it's like we're all directing, we're all producing, yeah. we're all gaffing. It's like everybody is just open to do everything, and that that's helped a ton. That's awesome. Having that 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 network of people is mm-hmm. is everything. And so, what what's changed work life balance wise? So you mentioned you've got you've got a wife. Mm-hmm. Um, what's it been like? What's that transition been like since? It's actually it's been good. It's been a. Uh, I mean, I've always been the kind of person that like stays busy, even if there's not a project happening, like I create some sort of project. Um, So really, it doesn't really feel like there's been too much of a change. It's just Mm -hmm. more things are different. So where it's like where I used to go into the DC office and go to DC shoots all the time, it's like, well, now I'm going here and doing this shoot for this random company or working with this company a lot more. So it's really it's been it's been like interesting change. but like, but it really hasn't changed a ton. You know, it's just yeah. I'm just working with more people. I, I love that excitement of yeah, picking up whatever client you're dealing with. Whether like we've done scaffolding videos before, mm-hmm. we've done like nail videos before. Yeah. Like, is that sort of like learning about every industry along the way is also kind of exciting. And um, I know we've found that we apply the certain things you learn in one industry, mm-hmm. and being able to apply something similar to a totally different industry is um, has been pretty effective. Like it, it gives you a bit of an edge, I think. Even though you've mentioned Motion Clubhouse a few times, but is there any anything else we can dive into? I mean, we just, you know, it was one of those things that it kind of all just came together very quick. Um, we put together, I think we gave ourselves, like I said, we gave DC six months notice. And also within that six months, the plan was like, okay, let's build, let's build the business, right? So like, let's get the bank account set up, let's get the website going, let's get a reel together, um, let's you know get the the name trademarked, and get the logo done, all those kind of yeah. things you got to do when you start a company, you know. I, I um, love the branding. I thank freaking you. love it. Thank you. It's so thank sick. You. Yeah, we're we're pretty stoked on it. I think I wrote down the maybe like forty names on an iPad just on an air, on the flight, and they were all you know there were so many different ones and motion you know you find a name that you're really excited about and then you see if the yeah. instagram exists or the company exists or the website and motion clubhouse i was like that's the one like that was the yeah. one i was really stoked on and i was i was happy so i reached out to an art director that used to work at dc and i'm like look this is this is what we're doing here's the name and he sent me back some some examples of the the logos and i was like i love yeah. it Let, let's go so but yeah starting all that stuff like we you know we gave ourselves six months to do it and i think we got everything set up within 30 days which was pretty mind-blowing to me because 
you know, looking back, like maybe three years ago, I think if we had talked about starting a company and like getting everything going, I think it would have been a lot harder and taken a lot longer for us. Either coming out of DC or even during your time there, what's one of the biggest achievements you think you've had or you and Modern have had? Definitely building a team and understanding like how to work with each other. And for myself, having to be like the, the film leader is understanding that people have certain strengths and you have to you have to realize that sometimes people don't realize their strengths or what they're passionate about. And I would always try to do my best job of going, what does this person really enjoy doing? And I would try to to encourage them with that and try to give them as many opportunities in that direction as possible because I want mm-hmm. them to be excited to to work with whether that's myself or the brand or on any job. And just re- it's like rewarding that person, but it's also a reward for me because they're going to do a great job at it if they're passionate. Yeah. So um, just making sure like this isn't all about myself. This is about the whole crew. This is about the team. Mm-hmm. And just being surrounded by by good people like Martin and everybody else we have. That's awesome. And what's one of the, I guess, you know, it follows a similar suit, but what's the biggest lesson you've learned since going out and creating Motion Clubhouse? The biggest lesson I've learned is that not everybody is going to be easy to work with, right? Whether that's, that's I mean, there's clients out there that are complete nightmare. Um, there's people in certain positions that are a complete nightmare. And I think we've always tried to practice and go, let's pretend like this is a multi-million dollar project and we got to deal with this person and every personality is different but it's just like in skateboarding right all skateboarders are not the exact same and you have to kind of learn how to i don't want to say be the bigger man but just like take your ego down a little bit Mm -hmm. and know how to how to deal with people and talk with people i mean it's no secret like in in the filmmaking industry there's a lot of people and clients that have no idea what they want or what they're talking about and when you're trying to create something for them and they have no clue that's it can get really frustrating but i think learning how to kind of be like getting them to that direction and making everything kind of come together so everybody's happy i think that learning that that should be the goal instead of being like you're wrong you're not doing it right let's Mm -hmm. you know this person has no clue i think like helping people get to to reach their goal um, and their vision is the most important thing. Learning to bite your tongue at the right time mm-hmm. is is an invaluable skill to learn, like earlier. Because um, yeah, I, I've definitely gone the other way, and I've definitely probably said things that I regret to a previous client. But um, you you learn it along the way, and you, totally. you make mistakes. So we've worked with a bunch of different partners. Um, we're lucky enough to both call them partners, but different camera companies and manufacturers that we've both worked with along the way. What's one piece of advice that you'd give to other content creators that are, are looking to either get um, endorsed or ambassador programs or just work with companies? Well, I love the stuff you guys are doing, by the way, with all the companies. So it's rad that Thank we, you. we work with a lot of the same companies. So you guys Hell are yeah. inspiration. Whenever I see your guys' stuff, I always get oh, it. Thank you, man. On it. Um, the biggest advice is that you actually believe in the company and the brand you're trying to work with. Um, myself, I don't I don't work with any companies unless I fully believe in it. You know, yeah. I don't I don't want, you know, people to look at something that I'm doing and go, oh, that's just he's getting paid to do that or he's getting free product to do that. I, and I tell companies like, I'm not going to work with you unless we're going to work long term, Right. So I'm not coming in to just show off your product one time and then use somebody else's the next week. Like it's important to me that, that I use your product and I continue to use your product because I believe in it. So I think that don't ever go and partner with somebody that, that you don't truly believe in. You know, I think that that's, that's the most important piece of advice I can give. Definitely. And I think it's always, a, you know, it's always about delivering first. Like mm-hmm. whenever I, I didn't even really understand about like, and you, you could have been the same. Like when we started using cameras, I didn't even think about people giving you something for free to, to use it. Um, I knew it was like I was into BMX and stuff and I knew, you know, I knew what an ambassador was, but I didn't think about it in this industry at all. And then um, with, with uh, Small HD, it was like I was just taking photos, like getting people to take photos of me using their, their monitors happened to be there and they're like can we share this i was like yeah i, I guess if it's cool <laughs> enough um and then yeah and then you start to work out like hey if you need anything let us know we've got a, a new model of something coming out do you want to try it then uh, uh, doors start opening i think the yeah. more that you you're just putting work out there um so uh, instead of chasing people and looking for something to receive something i think that's totally yeah i was 
We were fortunate. I remember we were doing a product. Wooden Camera has sent us a product early, and we were, I think it was like a, a Focus gear wheel or something, and we shot that. And I remember we were shooting photos, and I shot a photo um, of Martin in L.A., and I was like, whoa, like, I figured it out. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I just shot a really I, – I totally understand what we could do with this and what they're looking for. Like, I remember just looking at the photo and being like, I, I, I realize now, like, what we could yeah. do. Like, it was – I don't know. It's like, it's just different. Can, can you send me the photo? Cause we're still trying to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> so am I every day. And that's, what's fun though. Is like, I love, like I go out on the weekends and I'll shoot product photos or, or get BTS shots and things like that. Because for me, it's almost like a, a therapy. Like I just really enjoy doing it. And the companies yeah. we work with, they do a great job on how they use the products and how they promote it. And I see the way that they use it. And I look at that. I'm like, I, I get what you guys are doing. And I know to shoot all these lefts, rights, verticals, horizontals, everything. Um, for me, it's just something I enjoy. And especially with the photos part of it, because photos yeah. is so much easier than, than video work. Definitely. What do you think the, these companies that we work with, what do you think they value most from what we do? Well, a lot of the people there are actually filmmakers or come from a filmmaking background, you know, whether they went to school for it or they were doing it freelance. Um, they actually have a passion with it. And I think that they see the passion in people like us that are like, okay, these are true filmmakers that we're helping. You know, I, I the support that, that Teradek and Small HD and One Camera and all those companies have given us, I think that they, they're like on the journey with us, you know, like we when we started motion clubhouse even like uh the company black jet reached out to us and they're like hey we see what you guys are doing and this is so rad you're gonna go on your own like you have our support whatever it is that you want to do like you need product money we'll do whatever and it was just awesome to get support from companies like that that uh because you're starting your own thing is is scary you know so i think oh yeah i think they were really excited to be on that journey with us that's an epic story that's really cool and that's that's really as soon as you said it like they're on the journey with us that's how it does feel it's like you start to i guess when you i don't know no matter what company is whether it's small hd or or wooden or teradek you you look at these brands and you think there's this huge hierarchy and there's this you know impossible to break into and then but after working with them for a few months six months a year you just get closer and closer and learn that they're trying to help you as much as you're trying to help them and sort of figure it out as well like what works what doesn't work and yeah it's a very mutual sort of rewarding relationship totally and it's we're fortunate to really work with the best brands in the industry like, oh yeah i look around and i'm like there's there's no other company i want to work with besides these yeah. ones like they're they're Definitely. the best ones so Definitely. very very lucky where do you guys find inspiration for for different work and projects that comes up well i think coming from a company that that often would come to us and say hey we have this campaign or a commercial or a product they would say to us like you know come up with a concept or maybe they'd have a concept and we'd have to try to make that vision come to life and i think it's pretty much the same thing except you're dealing with you know multiple personalities and just different visions i think if you can deliver 80 percent of what's in somebody's brain i think that that's a success because i can't see in your mind like what what exactly you're looking for unless it's detailed and storyboard out which again a lot of people that we're dealing with they aren't filmmakers they're not creatives they just they have a general goal and idea so i think that that's what's been inspiring to us is like trying to figure out what people want and then and then elevate it right so Mm -hmm. always try to give extra always try to put in the extra time and, and extra effort to to make it better than they even expected um but i think just growing motion clubhouse in general like i i just we're, we're just getting started, you know, like yeah. I actually, we haven't even gotten started, you know, like we're doing great <laughs> right now, but it's like things are, are just happening. And I think that that's yeah. the most exciting part is that this is our thing and it's always going to be our thing. And we're just going to, we're going to continue to grow. That's awesome. Um, so what's one bit of advice you'd give your 17 year old self? <sighs> well, I do remind myself this every day and I think people need to realize it no matter what you're doing. Patience is key, right? I think with social media nowadays, um, everybody wants instant results. What is four months ago right now in the real world, it feels like a year ago. Okay. Because 
we're seeing so much stuff all the time and and i'll have to even sometimes i'll be like oh my gosh like i need to work on a big project or i need to make something i need to go out there and create um i'm blowing it doing this and i'll have to go i just released this big project 30 days ago like yeah i gotta remind myself like be patient you know and i think that that's a lot of people will attempt to whether that's like get clients or get jobs in filming things like that and they'll quickly get discouraged or they'll give up. And I think that you have to, you just have to remind yourself, like be patient with it. Like the seeds that you plant might take a year or even longer, but I think mm-hmm. it's important to just yeah have that patience. Like, especially when you reach out for, uh, to different clients and mm-hmm. there's that certain level of it's ego, but it's, it's a certain level of expectation that you would have like, Oh, they're going to reply soon. Like they'll, mm-hmm. they'll, they'll should say yes. Like they need this. Like maybe their work's not that great at the moment. Like mm-hmm. they need what we offer. Just how you, it's like stripping that mentality out mm-hmm. of the, your outreach process, or I think that was huge for us. And it all comes back to patience. It's like just letting people know you exist and get somehow getting your work in front of people is sometimes the the best and sometimes the only thing you can do. And whether they say yes, they want to work with you or they don't, it's it's irrelevant. You just move on to the the next one. Yeah, I think people are quick too to like write off people or like to get like angry at them. And it's like, dude. Yeah. You don't know, like I get emails all the time and like sometimes yeah. they just they sink to the bottom and it's not because I'm not into it. It's just like you don't know what's going on in people's life or how busy they are at the moment or what they're focusing yeah. on. And I think just yeah, being being less like uh I don't say like aggressive is the word, but I think just like like be more patient and acknowledge that sometimes the timing isn't right and yeah, right time might be later. Is there anything coming up that you want to tell people about or any um, any direction you want to send people? Um, I mean, Motion Clubhouse is still super new. We're, we're working on a ton of fun projects with DC. We've teamed up with a, a podcast called Huberman Lab, which is super interesting. It's, um, Andrew Huberman's podcast, which is incredible if you haven't checked it out. Um, a lot of great information there. We've been editing those, and I'm like, it's been really rad to – edit his podcast and learn a ton of stuff at the exact same time so that's been a fun new experience for us uh but you can check out our website motionclubhouse.com you can check out our instagram motion clubhouse uh we have a reel on there you can kind of you see a lot of our work and uh like i said we're just getting started hell yeah man thank you so much for hanging out with me and it was so great to actually finally catch up literally after i don't know it's probably been at least two years that maybe yeah. three that we've we've known your work um and so to be able to get to this point is, is awesome but i hope we have to finally work together um, yes. or at least catch up when we're in la next That'd yes and i'll sick. be i'll be out in new york in uh, november so i'll be hitting you up really hell yeah, yeah dude absolutely yes. what are you working on out here uh, Huberman's actually doing a live event, so I'll be out there for a few days and uh, filming that. Unreal. We'll definitely make it happen. Yes. Awesome, brother. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs>